Okay. <sighs> you guys, I, this, this book came across my desk. I, I kind of start a lot of shows like that, don't I? The title is called Love's New Earth. And I'll read the rest of the, the slug line in a minute, but I loved the title of Love's New Earth, bringing love or being love already in the new earth that is already in um, under construction, I guess. So the rest of it says, awakening to our collective true nature as love with rays of hope and reasons to prevail reasons to prevail i think that is really necessary right now everybody so i want to welcome author hope ives moran thanks for joining me oh thank you susan it's such a joy to be here with you today i i so you know all my circuits are fully lit now hope which is awesome i love that because i before we came on air i was telling hope everybody how my adrenals were pumping 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 um, but my circuits are on fire now. So thank you. Um, so let's talk about, let's talk about, hold on. How, how do I want to do this? I want to ask you, first of all, what the new earth is to you and your definition of it, your vision of it. Yeah. Beautiful. The new earth is a higher frequency earth. Mm -hmm. It's an earth where humanity is standing in the awareness of knowing who they are beyond the body as consciousness itself, and where things like community and kindness and compassion are our primary values, where there's enough food and water and shelter for everyone to have the basic uh, things that we need for life. And doesn't that to me, Hope, seems like a no brainer, right? Kindness, <laughs> compassion, more than enough for everybody. Uh, and I actually am 100% in agreement with you that that is already available to us. We have forgotten, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah, that's one of the things the book starts with is that awareness that we exist in a field of love. And it's around us all the time. And we need to remember to tap into it, call on it, use it, acknowledge it, because it is there for us. It's inside us. It's it's a beautiful sort of baseline for starting a day. You know, if, if you think about how I feel if I'm in a foreign territory or if I'm in a field of love, I feel a whole lot easier and more flowing and more loving if I think I'm being held and and that there are potentials within the field itself that are in support of my greatest dreams and my visions and 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 the wonder of creativity. Oh, I love that explanation. That's beautiful. And and see I we're I think we're from the same tribe or neighboring tribes. I really do hope because I uh, my my daily morning practice, and everybody who listens to my show knows I have a, an a extensive daily morning practice. But after I've gone into meditation, when I come out, I make sure I am living, moving, seeing, and breathing in that field of love. I mm -hmm. I I make sure the days I forget to do that are my wonky days, mm -hmm. are, are the days where I'm running into stuff so yeah well what what we do in the morning lays the groundwork for our entire day as you obviously know from from your practice um and that's that's a gorgeous gorgeous thing to remember i mean i don't always remember i i don't have a strict practice in that way but uh i do try and like hit the ground you know my first planting of my feet on the ground I do set an intention when, when I remember you know lovely make, is it the same intention every morning or no nope. uh, intention for the day yeah yeah cool yeah. so um so I I want to ask you okay it in, uh, in, in love's new earth which is really the new earth 
filled with love as you just described mm -hmm. um you you mentioned in the book that it's about standing in love wherever you are not projecting love out at somebody you know and that's interesting because i do find myself when like i do a lot of prayer work for people and healing work non-local healing work for people and there are times where i i find myself projecting the love out as opposed to just being love and expanding it hmm. is that what yeah. you mean by standing in 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 it right well if we are consciousness itself and i talk a little bit about the teachings of vedanta as a means of knowledge for knowing who we are as consciousness because it's a big understanding to extricate our viewpoint from being solely contained within our human bodies and so if we are he sending healing to somebody, it's like we're, we're separate from that person. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say we can't do that. But the, the perspective and the opportunity that I'm trying to make people aware of is that we are consciousness itself. And so there, we are all and everything and our bodies exist within us. And so you could you could expand your yourself to include that person that that you are healing. Okay, and you just you just hit me with we are all and everything, and our bodies are in that consciousness. That just turned my. I just kind of did a Linda Blair. I was like, "What? You're right. You're right." Yeah. And and you're absolutely right. It isn't that my body is mine alone. My body is in that unified field of consciousness, mm -hmm. the physical body. And then the other piece of it is I am not this body. You're inhabiting the body, you know, you're using the body. It's a user interface. I think there's a quote from Anelia Benz about that in my book, um, which I love, you know, the body is a user interface um, from consciousness to to interact in this realm. Wow. Have. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So, um, so can we talk briefly about the, um, rays of hope because you say with rays of hope and reasons to prevail. So what are the rays of hope? And then we'll talk about the, the, the four laws that you have. Okay. Yeah, the rays of hope, that's a section in the book that actually I love because it's a listing of teachers and tools and organizations and companies and corporations um, and ideas that are cleaning up the earth, creating the new earth. They're inspiring. Um, they're actually bringing these lofty ideas of a love's new earth down into a grounded, you know, nine to five reality. So that if the reader reads the book and says, yeah, I'm on board for creating a new earth, I'm on board for extricating myself from the old earth, where do I begin? And if you read through that list, you get really excited. And yeah. I've actually put that list on my website because there's so many lists, uh, so many links to websites and various places to just to make it easier because in the print book obviously you can't push on you the can't link. put all that in there right <laughs> right so it's on the home page scroll down on my website and i love that you gave those those resources so people can pick any one of them um because it is it, it, i did look at it and it's extensive and um and so hope i just want to say thank you mm -hmm. i want to say thank you for writing this, I'm going to goo on you right now, for writing your book and, and the research that you've done and you put it in here so that I don't have to go hunt. <laughs> I, yeah. People that listen to my show or my friends know I don't like to hunt on the internet. Just just tell me, give me the link. Just tell me what I'm supposed to hand, hand me the darn book and, uh, and I'll read it or be there or whatever. So thank you. I love that the, the, that the rays of hope are individuals and corporations mm -hmm. that are do already doing good work to begin to anchor the new earth in the five dimensional reality that it is aligning with and therefore 
those of us that are on the planet still, still are aligning with that higher frequency as well, because the earth is, is, is emanating it. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually reading that list, I find it gets you really excited. Um, you know, raises your ideas of what's possible yeah, and, if, and hopefully it'll spark people to start businesses. You know, we all have a role to play at this really important time on the planet and stepping up to play our role, being willing to take on a big role. Um, those are what are what that's, what's being asked of us right now. Oh yeah. So, yeah. um, so, and you do have a section, a very um, extensive section about uh, the pandemic and what was happening and what was happening behind the scenes, but also um, kind of how you navigated it. And the pandemic, I, I totally agree with you. It, to, Well, to me, Hope, you guys have to read this book. Um, <laughs> The pandemic was an opportunity to reset, was an opportunity to really get hunkered down and get in touch with that higher self, that inner self, that that consciousness, that divinity that we are. And I was just, I was flabbergasted when it was over, right? I have opinions about all that. Um, <laughs> that most people just hopped right back on the freeway, just went back to who they were before. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of change uh, that I was watching. Yeah, I'm hopeful that a lot of people became a little bit more discerning about uh, swallowing hook, line and sinker, what mainstream media, what governments, what pharmaceutical companies were promoting. Mm -hmm. um, because I think um, it was a wake up call for me, for sure. Um, and for many people, you know, seeing how sort of the things that were being told to us, they didn't really jive. They didn't make sense. The logic was missing in large gaps in places. And, um, you know, I, I was able to discover some alternative news sources that were really helpful. And I've included a number of documentaries and and yeah. things to help people learn and all you know an alternative understanding of what else was happening during the right. pandemic beyond what mainstream was was sharing so do you feel that it's um see i love history i, I love history i read historical novels all that <clears throat> Do you feel that it's important to go back and review recent history or history? Like we're, we're dealing with stuff that's falling apart that was set in motion, what, 17,000 years ago? Something like that, right? Um, I think I would say yes with a qualification because what the the other piece of what I'm aware of is the earth's frequency is rising. And so we're an entirely different environment. The plants, the animals, the people, um, the rocks are all needing to adapt to a higher frequency um, world. Mm -hmm. And so harking back to what happened in the 1700s, in the 1800s, in the 1900s, um, it's relevant because it helps us learn some of the things that humanity tends to do. But on the other hand, we can't let it be a limitation to what right. we think is possible. Because right now, our optimism, our focus, our creativity, our uh, innate uh, expanded potential, our little uh, seeds that need to be watered with joy, with optimism, with hope, with love. And so it's sort of a, a yes and no situation. Yeah, a yes and no. Yeah, yeah, there's a, um. well, one of the things you said in that chapter about the pandemic 
is you found that it was very important to face your fears mm. and um and i actually have a guided meditation called that face your fear um <clears throat> but i and so again i agree with you because in my life experience and i i have to run around you know like chicken little sometimes yelling that the sky is falling because I get myself in such a tizzy fit about, you know, and fearful, mm -hmm. but then I have to sit down and go, what, what was that really about for me, for me, you know, not for, well, it is for the world too. I mean, if, if we're all interconnected, if we're all unified in consciousness, then what is, is it makes me fearful chances are is making other people fearful. So, yeah. um, but it, it, in facing the fear that I have, or you, the listener have, it's helpful because like today, it's just looking at, I'm feeling, feeling fearful about this. Okay. We're in a presidential election. I'm feeling fearful, right? and not go down the rabbit hole about it not 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 then uh devolve into a puddle of wiggling fear just notice okay i'm feeling fearful and then go back to what you were just saying hope about being optimistic and planting seeds of hope and being more love if i think you even said in your book somewhere um that if you're fear that darkness light will always shine through darkness right and um and so if you're fearful everybody it's important to then touch back in within your heart like i talk about and find that love one even small mon monochrome of love and then that expands and mm -hmm. opens you up right and grounds you Right. Yeah. Thinking of something like your, your children, your dog, your cat, that can be sort of a little uh, portal into uh, a caressing of your own heart in a sense. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on, Hope. I got to put her on a leash. Okay. She's had a rough day. Well, she heard me talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, come here. Come here, come here. I have, a, I have another dog, and but he generally is quiet when I do this. She just gets a little revved. She's a Sheltie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will edit that out. Okay. Um. And now I, I lost our, our thread. Right. Well, sort of I did too. I'm not good at like holding on to those. That's things. okay. Um, hold We're on, on fear. Fear. And, fear. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just not, we don't need to chew on that anymore. Okay. Um, okay. So coming back in, I'm going to tell my guy to edit this. Um, so Hope, I want to read something from your book. Um, and I forget what chapter it's in, but um in the book you're 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 talking about um going astray from the wholeness that we were we have always been, that we were created as. Mm -hmm. And um you say we went astray when we started tearing the wholeness apart in an attempt to understand its perfection. I love that. And, yeah. uh, it, to understand its perfection, synergy, and power in order to claim it for ourselves. Right. Yeah. That's from Anastasia. I um, love that. I love yeah. her. Yeah. Isn't she amazing? I, well, I've never met her, but I love that. And, um, and you go on to say science tends to ignore the integrity and power of the wholeness of the world. 
and that the world needs the integrity of all its parts to maintain its wholeness. Well, it's always whole, but yeah. But mental, you know, we need to, uh, as human beings, low vibration human beings, I'm sorry, as human beings, we need to see that we are part of that integral wholeness. Right. And when science became the forerunner, the, the, the authority, let's talk about authority. When science became the authority, then they had, they wanted to, for it, it maybe probably started very innocently, you know, mm -hmm. with Galileo or, you know, of, oh, let's see how that works. And let's see how that works. And in fact, I read something where the first scientists were really becoming scientific or investigative because they wanted to understand the higher consciousness. They wanted to understand their oneness with source or whatever that energy was. So, mm -hmm. well, the, the likeness that I love that Anastasia brings up is, you know, we have this working car. We have this working spaceship, if you could <laughs> say that. And we want to like pull it apart to see how it works when we could just get in and use it. And we need to, as a human species, remember to just get in and use it. And that's what my book is all about, is reminding us that we have everything we need already. We are what it is we're looking for. And it's, it's the opportunity to, you know, remember the laws of creation use them consciously because we're not really careful about that. We're focusing on things we don't want. And we have a huge opportunity uh, right now where there's a huge split Yeah, where, where these two different worlds are, are being created. And one is filled with suffering and control and AI monitoring and surveillance cameras. And, and one is not, it's like an alternative that, that, requires all of us to say wait a minute that's the world i want and, that's the world and, i want yeah and start walking toward it creating it you know what's fascinating it. to me hope is that there's people that can't see that that's a possibility right and it, i understand it, that uh, you because do? we've never we've never experienced that you know people have lived their lives in really challenging situations not not feeling love, not feeling supported, not feeling, you know, all these things that are really foundational to having a sense of hope and optimism in, in life. And so I'm hopeful that the book can seed some of that potential. Yes, seed some of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so let's talk about the, the four laws. Tell, tell us what the four laws are that you put in your book here. Yeah. The four laws, which I took from the handbook for the new paradigm, are um, first the, the law of attraction, Ox opposites attract and like attracts like. That's, you know, everybody knows that one. And when we are at a certain frequency band, we attract things that are appropriate to that frequency band. That's sort of the foundation that you're standing on when you create. And the next law is deliberate intent. It's like, okay, here I am standing on this platform. I'd like to go over there. Um, I'd like to create this business. I'd like to brew a cup of coffee. I have a deliberate intent to do that. Yeah. And I take the actions to do that. And I, I, the third law is allowing. So at a certain point with all those things, you have to stop acting. You got to let the cough, the, the water boil and, and the coffee to brew. You step back. You allow the universe to do its magic, bringing in all the ingredients of yourself and other people who are influencing this thing. And yeah. then harmony is created. Ah, I love there it. it is pour that cup, you know, uh -huh. start your business. Um, so there's, there's four steps. And, and the, the key one is realizing our deliberate intention. 
and our focus because right now what's happening if we're not careful we're watching the nightly news we're listening to the radio we're watching movies and we're allowing the images of uh, violence suffering destruction war killing to populate our hugely powerful creative uh, minds and yeah. um that's not a good idea right now um, if it ever was really you know and it's fast <laughs> isn't it fascinating how those movies and shows are because are the blockbusters now you know they're they're they've been populating now you know all the murder mysteries or all the unsolved murder mysteries or you know whatever and and Oh, we can go down that rabbit hole till, too, but um, <laughs> you know, I since people couldn't go anywhere during pandemic and they were binge binging on whatever was on television, then a lot of people made some stuff that was very um, suggestive, frightening, that kind of thing. Right. The the other piece that people are maybe unaware of is there are subliminal messaging in all of these things images that we can see at, at a certain level, but we can't catch, you know, in our conscious mind. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, during the pandemic, um, I was watching, a, you know, a flicks kind of series, and I watched the first one of this series. And after I finished watching it, I had this hunger to watch the next ones. And I yeah. noticed it, I noticed it. And I said, that is is not right and so i refused i refused to watch so we need to be paying attention to what's going on in our own brains because our brains and our minds are being infiltrated um, by all level of technology images ideas and subliminal uh, messaging i i it is being inf infiltrated Okay, so let's talk about, you use this word, phrase, trans, transhuman. So when I first thought that, I was like, what, what, what? But then you explain it later. So tell everybody what being transhuman is. Um, transhumanism is this uh, way of being in a human body where you're spliced with technology. Um, and I suppose it can be at many levels with an implant. It can be simply that you have separated from your own soul and your own heart source within yourself. And you've, so you're, you're gathering all your energy, your inputs from the outer world. And so you become essentially, um, malleable or, um, what's the word? um you can be you know danced like a puppet yeah easily manipulated manipulated right and so transhumanism is one of the goals of the old world control system right now and um i i would encourage anyone who's interested to do some research on it but but it's it's like a humanity that is separated from nature and has perhaps lost connection with their own soul, their own heart's desires, their creative excitement. Um, so it, it's, it's something where a soul can be separated from the flesh. And that is um, an outcome that I don't, I don't believe is positive for us as a human family. I think now is the time where we all need to gather, gather together, you know, all races, all strata of society need to come together because there are forces on this planet wanting to separate us from our souls mm -hmm. and take over because we are so amazing and so powerful. So, and we are, we are, Humanity is that uh, cosmic experiment, right? <laughs> uh, for uh, free choice, 
-hmm. but also the cosmic experiment experiment of can we rise into and align with a high frequency of love and maintain that and then live together work together cooperate you know in connection with each other so that we have compassions like what you said at the very beginning having mm -hmm. working from kindness and compassion and all that so mm -hmm. so we are at the um precipice of the grand experiment in in many ways right and and the deck has been stacked against us i mean the banking system as it is now which i talk a little bit about in the book um is not you know all that that uh extra money we pay when we borrow money that interest mm -hmm. goes into some some alternative hole it never comes back to uplift humanity and so on love's new earth there will be new ways of working with money if there is any money and it it will uplift the human family it will it will come back into the communities it will be localized in a way that money at this point is not because in this uh scenario it it appears as though humanity is is not innately good but it, humanity is innately good and kind and wants to help each other and be a part of something wonderful but the systems that are in place now the you know many global corporations and and all sorts of forces are kind of sucking humanity dry and um, part of our task right now is to notice that and work in a way to not not resist it but to extricate ourselves from that scenario and find ways of creating a new uh, new paradigm. One of the phrases I, I created uh, that the book works up to is this phrase, which I think everyone could could believe in. It's it's um, we are creating a new earth paradigm for the highest and best good of all concerned. And if we could all just remember that and in our most creative moments, stay focused on that, we, we have a chance of moving toward it. We don't have to know how to get there. Mm -hmm. We don't have to know all the details. I, I liken it to, you know, okay, I want to go to San Francisco. From where I am in Vermont, I could take any multitude of routes to get there. But the one thing I know is that I'm going to San Francisco. And that's what we as a human family need to decide. We are creating a new earth. We're going to, we're headed to love's new earth. And, you know, is this thing I'm doing right now getting me closer to love's new earth or not? Would yeah. be one, one thing to remember. You know, years ago, right before the pandemic, just a little bit before, you notice I have circles on my painting behind me. Yeah. Um, I was talking to my mom who's now crossed over <clears throat> and um, I was saying, mom, the, the authoritarian way the world has been working with, you know, the pyramid where there's the guy on top and then all the little worker bees at the bottom, but the guy on top, the guy on top gets all the good stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, that's all collapsing. It's all collapsing mom. And pretty soon we're going to be collaborating with each other have co-creating because that's exactly what you're talking about hope co-creating this new earth we all are going to be sitting on circles having a, a conversation from a place of love and wanting to bring their best creative gifts their best in intellectual stuff to support humanity's growth not demise mm -hmm. and i remember my mom panicking she was like well i don't understand how that works well who's going to be in charge and i'm like mom there's going to be one person in charge we all get to have a say and she's like I, I i don't i don't understand you know and then and then she exited so you know yeah i think those of us who remain here are those of us who came for this time and want to be a part of this creative 
experiment that's going on. You know, I think many of us are waking up at various points, but we all came to be here at this time because this is this is the ticket. <laughs> this is the Super Bowl yep. <laughs> of of a very long period of time on this planet. Yeah, and it's um there's I was thinking also it's a gift to witness the the changing, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like watching the seasons, but the seat when you know when when the leaves fall and then it's winter, it feels like nothing's going to grow again, right? And right now we're watching all the leaves fall, right? right. And it means that there are there are people dying. It means that there are people doing horrific things because I and I'm I'm glad about this transhuman term because it makes sense to me. I, I, I have met some of these people. We've seen a couple of them recently on television um, and where they, their soul isn't there anymore. Yeah. And I have always believed that there is a divine spark in everybody. There is that creative spark of consciousness in all of us. And I have to remind myself that even those people that seem soulless they it, 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 it's still there just are they because this goes back to self-responsibility and freedom of choice do they choose to keep it turned off right yeah that's not my really, choice it's a really good point and and that's one thing i say in the book is if we can stand in our own like spark of infinity our eternal self our most expanded love-based Christed vision, which is not a religious term. It's just exactly. sort of seeing through the eyes of a divine creator. If we can look upon a transhuman person from that perspective ourselves, oh. like a tuning fork, you know, being, we can um, perhaps awaken them. <laughs> um, and I I'm having a small mini little reaction. Oh, I do have okay. red hair, so I react. Um, because that, that if I, if I can turn, if I can do that tuning fork thing with what you just said, it all, it made me feel like, and then I, therefore I do have to be, I have to walk my talk. I have to be that compassionate visionary that sees that kernel of love in every single human being, regardless of their actions. We don't have to agree with them. Right. We don't have to give them the shirt off our backs. We need to simply allow a possibility for them oh. to, to show yep. show that they are human. Yep. You know, if 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 they've chosen another path, we do not need to spend any time, waste any of our time or energy upon them. But you know, whoever appears in front of you. Perhaps there's some something there for one or other, other of you um, to exchange in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that brings it down to the microcosm because each of us have, we all have, we don't have to wait until there's a big thing. Um, we don't have to wait until we're on a big stage, right? To then make a difference. It is in every time you stand with someone, every time you stand behind someone, when I'm when I'm in line somewhere, I often just ground myself in love because that I feel much more comfortable that way. And then I try and just resonate it, you know, mm -hmm. through my auric field and just resonate it in front. And I find myself blessing all the people in front of me or blessing the blessing the people behind me, especially the guy that wants to stand right next to me, you know, and I'm like, okay, just take two steps back. I bless you. Thank you. I can breathe now, but it all from initiating that, uh, frequency of love that I am. And I attempt to maintain daily. 
that that's so powerful when you're with people but also you can be alone in a room in the middle of nowhere and you are also influencing all that is and I so love that how we are and who we are matters you know how do we who do we know ourselves to be and what do we see when we look out and um, I used to like walk into a, a room full of people, you know, a little bit fearful, you know, are they going to like me, you know? And then I realized, what if I moved into that room with the mindset that I loved each and every one of those beings and they loved me? It was such a transformation, an instantaneous transformation. Um, and we can all, you know, do those little mind mind games that just help us uh, adjust and um, bring a new possibility mm -hmm. into how we have been in the past. Yeah, I appreciate that. I so appreciate that. I have uh, my son and daughter-in-law, we've been having the conversation about integrity. They're in their early 30s and they both have decided that integrity is going to be their watchword. Hmm. And so they watch how they say things when they're, they have a business. So when they're communicating email or whatever, they, they have to rewrite my son, especially rewrite, rewrite, rewrite until it is in integrity, not worded, um, you know, so that you're throwing a grenades at someone, that kind of thing. And yeah. so we had this conversation about, well, well, can't, can't you just say that, you know, they should have done it this way. And I'm like, mm, I don't think that that's, you know, that's a bit blamey. Well, can't you just do it? Nah, I don't think so. So it's been, it's been an interesting conversation. And then because everybody's telling the story right now, there is a story going on, at least in America, mm -hmm. there's a story going on. And I went and got my nails done yesterday. There was a story going on. And I'm listening to the story and I'm, do I participate with my opinion or do I stay silent? Because what, what is it, what we think, right? You said this in the book, uh, in terms of creating, our, the energy goes into the, the thoughts and it creates a manifestation. I think mm -hmm. I got that right. So if we're if we're telling the story with some energy, then then you're creating the very thing you don't want. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We we need to find that um, integrity of our own self expression. You know, there will be times where it's for you to speak up and say, "Well, that's funny," because you know I see it a different way. Um, and if, if, you know, if we send out our words with a lot of barbs, we're just going to get resistance. And so one of the tasks of our human family is to figure out how to communicate in a way that we were never communicated to exactly in our own lives. You know, there's exactly. a, some techniques out there that are really helpful that are about, you know, answering questions and, and, and being very sort of curious about where the other person's perspectives come from, where they where they've learned what they learn. Um, that's such a frontier. And I know for me, um, Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, yes. What, what was the name of his uh, um, technique? Um, anyway, look up Marshall Rosenberg for- Oh my for God, it's on the tip of my tongue and I can mm -hmm. see it. Nonviolent communication. Thank you. Thank you. It would have driven me nuts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but learning how to communicate with people who see things differently um, is really critical right now because we have such uh, effective tools of destruction. We cannot afford to be um, angry with each other. We, we need to find ways to communicate and, and work together. Well, and there's also the idea, and you, you, I saw it somewhere in your book briefly, of um, that third factor coming out. You know, if there's two, two, um, two different points of view that both want to be heard, but if we can stand in that tension, so to speak, that vibration of what each of us thinks we want to say and allow it, then there's a third more harmonious or synergistic um, 
thing that comes forward that that neither one would have thought of because they were so stuck in their point of view. Right. Yeah. Um, in John Root's um, section, that's a little section that John Root wrote in my book about deepening community. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how objections to a plan, say, say your community wants to do something or build something and somebody has an objection. The objection makes the plan better oh. when, when you sort of tease out what the person is seeing that the rest of the group can't see. And so it's a, it's a really beautiful sort of formula for welcoming um, differing opinions. I love that. Yeah, and that, we're... that feels like truth to me. I'm going to go back and read that part. Oh. Yeah. He just wrote a book called, uh, freedom justice community, John Root. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that tip. Yeah. Um, so you guys, the book is called love's new earth. And Hope, is there anything you want to say before we wrap up or finish um, that you feel like didn't get said today? Um, essentially that this is a key time on the planet and each and every one of us has a role to play and we can no longer afford to stand by and watch other people take roles in our local communities uh, go to the voting booth, whatever it is, we need to take action because the future of our children and our grandchildren is at stake. The entire future of humanity is at stake. There is an agenda to turn our world into an open air prison and that will destroy what it means to be a human. And we have such an alternative potential and and that's the clarion call of of love's new earth and i'm just one voice there's many of us um working towards creating this new earth i just call it love's new earth and um i'm hopeful that it'll inspire and empower and help us navigate our way through the maze that this world has become well and I really... <laughs> yeah and you guys and it's getting you think it's raucous now it will be a little more raucous as other other things uh, collapse, but to focus on love, like which is what I was attracted to about your book, Hope, you're leading with love, love's new earth, not just a new earth, but love's new earth. And I, I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for who you are and the research you did and your life experience that brought you to writing this book because it is a full book full of resources. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. I really appreciate uh, our conversation. It's It's been really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. So um, until next time, everyone, I'm just going to end with, and so it is, namaste. Mm. Namaste.